But I want to tell you a story first because I was walking down the street just nearby our house and uh, I walked past a building where people were like, there's a whole bunch of balconies and stuff. And I heard that rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat of what sounded like a paintbrush on a balcony like railing. And I was like, beat the devil out of it. <laughs> Some little kid was painting and was learning how to beat the devil out of it. But over here, we've got some other art. We're trying to decide whether this is a life-size Totoro, and it could very well be. Can we stand next to it? Give us some perspective. Doesn't he change sizes or something? He, he's really bouncy. He's real big. And Mai is like real small. Um, so it looks like a possibly life-sized Totoro, and you, you, I feel like we'll see Totoros around, but you don't see cat buses very often. And we're actually kind of disappointed because you can't really go inside here. But I'm pretty sure the number of spiders that's in that building would keep me at bay. Well, there's lots of cats in there to keep those in bay. Also, not making it better. <laughs> not making it better. Is your name Mai or May? May Mai? Is it an elephant? <laughs> That's a shout back. Shout back. We're starting out the morning with a special spot. When I go through the guidebooks, most of the time they will show you a power spot that happens somewhere in the prefecture. Like there'll be a page of power spots. And I got to a page that looked like it was showing power spots, but I didn't see the word power anywhere. I saw the word yukari. And we looked this up and it says like connection. So instead of power here, we're gonna try and figure out what we're connecting to. Right now I'm touching a tree, so connecting to a tree. Turns out this is a sakura, and we were looking at the tree. It looks mossier than what we're used to in Tokyo, and that might be because these are getting elements that hit it and grow on it that don't happen in Tokyo. So we were kind of like, is this really a sakura tree? And if you look at the flowers, which is a dead ringer for the little dimple that you can see on the edge there, it's definitely a sakura tree. I do not know the names of plants at all in any language, but they put signs on them. And this one caught my eye because it is Nezumi Mochi. And <laughs> it started to make me wonder, like, it's a weird name because Nezumi means mouse or rat. And then mochi is like mochi, like the, 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 the Japanese squished rice treat that everybody knows. It's like super famous, right? So it's like, is this, is this, is this, is this, a, is this rat mochi, like made of rats? Is that what they're getting for? Or is it mochi for rats? Like a specific mochi that rats like to eat? Or like, what are we going with it? And why is it the name of a tree? I mean, it's probably the realistic answer is probably that some kanji from China or something has come in and created this conglomeration of a word that makes that reading happen and then nobody knows the actual kanji so they just write it in hiragana so it's actually legible but <laughs> i don't know I, did, I, I thought that was kind of cute if i saw that on a menu i'd be like i don't know i don't think so <laughs> When I used to go to school, specifically high school, I had like an hour long bus ride. The bus would pick us up, it had to pick up the like 40 other kids that fit on the bus, and then we went all the way out to Spotsylvania High School. And I would say on a monthly basis, you would be engulfed somewhere along that journey with the smell of a dead skunk. And Japan doesn't have skunks. But somehow, this bush behind me, which normally is blooming with like pink little flowers, which makes it a dead giveaway. You can see like one over there, but now it's like covered in spider webs. This bush smells like a dead skunk. And every time I smell one of them, I just go, skunk, and I breathe in Spotsylvania. <laughs> We've seen signs that say watch out for electric fences. We're also seeing signs that say beware of bears and make sure either you have a radio or a bell with you. God, bears are such scaredy cats of sound. Anywho, um, so this line right here looks like it is rope, 
but there's actually little bits of metal woven into it. And we immediately thought, oh, you can't come on this side of it. As you see, I am on this side of it because we've decided that that's not true. Um, we think that this is either keeping the bears over there or keeping the bears over here. There's a sign that says there's bears over here. So we, maybe the bears will be, they don't want the bears in there. Um, we're coming over here because there's a little bit of a hike to go up the hill, but it took us a very long time to decide, are we allowed to go over this? There's no signs saying no humans um, anywhere. So we've just decided to hop the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so I've said this before in previous videos, it's been a while, but I think it every time. I don't trust these signs that say you need to use a bell when you go hiking in bear country because I think the bears are putting that up to find people. Like, all it does is just give you, it's all ruse by the bear, like mafia or whatever. What font did the bears use? <laughs> the bear, or Kuma font. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. Do they have their own convenies where they go and print this stuff it's and possible. I think bears are wow. smarter than we're giving them credit for. Oh, what is it? Is that a butterfly? It's a dragonfly. It's black. Oh, completely black. It's cool looking. That was a pretty intense 122 meters. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> intense. Constantly on... You turned the music off. The bears are going to come. <laughs> yeah, we, we just played music going up the hill, probably looking more foreigner than anything, but at the I mean, same the sign, time... The sign down there says, like, either have a bell, I don't have a bell, and, and it says play music, so play me radio mm -hmm. or whatever. So I radioed. That's the best I can do. Yeah. But uh, we didn't get eaten by a bear, so it worked. True. 100%, 100%, maybe we'll leave the music off on the way down and if we get eaten by the bear, then we know it works. He's gonna come from behind. <laughs> what? <laughs> because he's on this side of the, of the fence. And he's gonna be wearing a necklace of bells that he's taken from his previous victims. <laughs> That's really creepy. But maybe he won't eat us because he won't get his prized bell. It just lets you go. I don't know how to wear a, a cell, phone. cell phone on my chest. <laughs> I haven't figured out that technology. We're just working on fonts. But, <laughs> the uh, the view is nice, you know. Um, it's, yeah, just, it's fine. I, I asked you if the view made you feel connected to Japan or disconnected from Japan. And what it makes me feel right now is disconnected from the civilization that I'm seeing. Like down there, I don't feel like I'm a part of that, those buildings and clusters and stuff. So I guess it really is that I am now connected with nature, uh, a more like this than that. Mm. And I guess, good job, Yukari. <laughs> <laughs> we're really, we're really reaching here, but I think I, I found my connection to that. And you just basically got to go to the top of the hill, the high place. That's true. The high place is pretty good. Mm. We were coming down jamming to our music because we if, And if you're curious, if you want to put on the soundtrack, <laughs> it's Green Jello's The Bear Song is what we're listening to. We <laughs> if go. you don't know it, look it up and it'll make you laugh. Anyway, go ahead. And as we're coming down, like stomping down the mountain, I saw a big snake just... He had come onto the path and he just did a full U-turn off the path. And I mean, he had to be... Yeah, about um, between a meter and a meter long. and a half, I guess, is what yeah. we would say. I'd definitely say a meter, like he was at least, if I held him his head to my hip, he'd touch the ground, for and sure. He uh, just kind of went off the path only a few feet and then just kind of looked at us and chilled and we made a little bit of video and got some video of him squiggling around, snaking about. I was and hoping then... he'd come back across the path, but he's not coming. Yeah, the thing is, is like, I know that there's dangerous snakes in Japan, but I have no idea which ones, uh, so. Is it the brown ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw a brown one. I basically just like, people are like, oh, you got to know which snakes are dangerous or whatever. I just assume they're all dangerous. <gasps> Good call. You know what Wise I'm saying? thought. Like, who, who's like, that one? That one's fine. Just go and play with it and, you know, it's going to be good. <laughs> like, That's not how you should treat it. Avoid all serpents if possible. <laughs> I'd say on a monthly basis, you would smell a dead squirrel. Not squirrel. Uh, I got to start over. <laughs> that got me good. As we do, we've kind of gone off the beaten path a little bit. <laughs> As we do. As we do. And um, it has gotten to the point where we can't go any further, I don't think. This car has not got quite a very high clearance or anything, so we got to be really careful about getting stuck. But now we're in a predicament where we're on this really, really narrow little path, and I don't know how Katie's going to turn around. And we've gone 
not a long way, but maybe like, I don't know, 700 or 800 meters. That's a long way to go backwards. So, as you can see, we're going backwards at the moment. I like going backwards. That's good, because you got some going backwards to do. I've had my eye on one shrine that I just thought if we go anywhere near it, we're gonna go to it. And it is one up to me. I did not expect this pony out here. <laughs> a weird thing that I noticed is that all of the, um, what are these called? Lanterns, I guess. All of, all of these lanterns are like boarded up or have like a paper over top of that area. I don't understand why. Usually they're completely open um, and empty but these are boarded up. I'm gonna go and see what's inside this place that I was so excited about and everybody will be really disappointed. Get ready. <laughs> Number one, the pony's eyes follow you wherever you go. They kinda do, whoa. Yeah, freaky. <laughs> Secondarily, it's like a Mona Lisa of ponies. <laughs> yeah. um, this shrine looks to me like a dragon like every picture that i saw of it i was just like it looks like a dragon like something that, like the face of a dragon it's just the face and i don't know if you see it or if you see it but i definitely saw it. and every time i saw the picture i was like there's a dragon in there it looks like the dragon from mario kart 8. <laughs> when you're gonna drive into the head of it <gasps> it is oh it's my favorite track it's got curves girl I think this is one of the coolest looking shrines I've ever seen. And I've seen quite a few shrines, let me tell you what. This one feels like it was designed in a video game or something. I say this sometimes, but I feel like I'm literally in a Zelda game right now. The shape of it is really unique, the way that it's, it's given that dragon shape that she was talking about. And it just looks like the mouth of the dragon open and everything, especially when you look at it from the side. It's not your standard normal shrine. It definitely has got its own vibe going on. And the fact that it's sitting inside of this little grove it's like got these walls around it, like you can see behind me. As I spin around, you can see that. And the back wall is just all mossy, covered in moss. And it's just all green and it's cool in here. Uh, the whole experience is really, really striking. I definitely felt the Yukati here more than I felt it when we were on Snake Bear Mountain. Well, dragons and stuff. Yeah, I feel a connection to that, I guess. Uh, the whole thing was, like, you, 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 what, what, what drew you there? Was it just because it was shaped uniquely? You could tell that in the book, or? Yeah, yeah, well, mm. once I saw it, I was like, wow, that really looks like a dragon. And like you said, we've seen a lot of temples, so until something tickles some other part of your brain, you're not interested in it. Like, I see lots of different pictures of temples for the Fukui area, and I'm just mm. like, no, nope, looks standard, looks standard, whoa, dragon. Mm. So, yeah. It's interesting too because this is just in a we're in the middle of nowhere, like yeah, we're we're just way out in nowhere. Area. And it doesn't seem like this town has any callback. Like sometimes we go to a place and there is, we we go for a certain something and then we realize oh there's a whole development around this. Like mm -hmm. they have a whole street. Yeah, that's, yeah, tourist this has street and nothing. stuff. This has got. Uh, let's see, what have we got around here? <laughs> We've got nothing, some farms, a hill, let's and spin. a little parking lot right there where we're parked. <laughs> There's not a whole lot in this little area, but you're right, usually there'll be like a build up in front of something that's that cool, but for some reason, maybe it's too remote to have a lot of draw, I don't know, but they've done really well. Well, when you cage the dragon, you don't really want to live next door. Maybe not. I'm really looking forward to this lunch. Um, I eat soba multiple times a week. I cook it myself. It's not good when I do it, um, but it's edible, so I eat it. We have come to a restaurant to get Oroshi soba, and Oroshi soba is famous for here in Fukui, and it's famous because this is the largest scale production of soba at least in the country, possibly of this kind of soba in the world. And people just love it. The texture, the flavor, they're really zealous about it. What makes it Yoroshi is that you've got the soba from this area and then you've got some grated Japanese radish on top. Um, the other fixings, I don't know if that's part of it, but I see these onions and uh, bonita flakes or katsuo. I'm not sure. They're different fish. 
I think they're different fish. I think it's the same thing. Could be, don't know. <laughs> um, but these toppings seem to be pretty general and I've been quite excited about this because I've been eating these flakes at home a lot and I just get the cheapest stuff at the store and I'm excited that they probably use quality stuff. What came as a surprise was the wasabi down here. I did not expect that, so I'm gonna, she said to be careful and mix it in. The broth underneath is a shoyu dashi, so it's kind of like a broth made from fish, and then they've added shoyu to it. Other options were to get salt flavored, shio, and I didn't opt to do that. I watched a man mix this up. He made it look very easy. I'm making it look really difficult. That is mixing. You can't see the ingredients anymore, it's fine. I'm gonna just jump into the noodles. Mm. You eat a lot of soba, so you can stack it against the stuff you oh, get at the grocery I can, store. I can stack it. It's leagues. It's it's like a harsh like a hard noodle. And whenever I go to a ramen place, they're like, do you want it soft or a hard noodle? I want a hard noodle. When I bite in, I want to know I'm eating a noodle. You a bit of a crunch. <laughs> um, these are definitely thick. They're, they're super thick. And we almost went to another place that would have some food for you. Eric can't really eat soba. So if we go to a soba place, I really have to do some due diligence to make sure that he's not gonna starve while I sit there and eat. Um, so, I'm so happy this place worked out. Look at that noodle. Oh, and the, the flavor is good. Texture's fantastic. All the other bits and pieces I will probably fall into, but my mixing ability really sucked. You can see some grated yams. Um, an interesting flavor that was in there was radish. I just read about that and I didn't expect radish to be a part of this, but you can taste Radish or daikon? What do you mean by the radish? Like radish as in the sense of like that harsh flavor that you get from a oh. radish, not like a, daikon is like giant radish, but this is not what we think about daikon. Daikon to me is like a very soft, like thing that absorbs flavors, whereas this is putting out flavor. Not at all the flavor I thought was gonna come from the picture really outstanding. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with my regular lunches now. Okay, so like Katie said, I can't really eat soba, and the reason is I've been having trouble with digesting certain things, and buckwheat is what soba is made out of, is one of those things, it just makes my stomach not feel very good. So she had found this place that had something else on the menu, and that's called chazuke. And it is basically a bowl of rice with some things inside of it, and then you put some hot water on top of it. And I gotta say that it's got the um, katsuoboshi, the b bonita flakes or whatever on it. I'm not a big fan of that stuff, but I'm gonna just go with how, it, how the chef recommends and see what we get. So, what was the major thing that they were selling you on this one? Uh, that it wasn't soba. <laughs> <laughs> what about the wasabi? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's wasabi and then um, there's like pickled stuff on here as well. And I love wasabi. So I can get down with that. I'm noticing that this portion is pretty small and I'm thinking this is supposed to be like something on the side as you have another dish. But um, as you can see, I didn't do that because this is the only thing on their menu that I think I can actually eat without having any sort of- uh, How many meals were on the menu? Stomach problems, yeah, two meals were on the menu. <laughs> Basically. Mm, there's a lot of flavor going on. Um, the wasabi is great, and it's strong enough with the wasabi that you don't have the fishy flavor from the um, the flakes or whatever. Uh, they're still there, but they're in the background, so they're okay. The way that everything is dancing together is fine. I usually really don't like those flakes very much, but in this case, it's edible. Um, I think that if you were into all of the ingredients, you would find this to be very good, uh, but I am not super into one of the ingredients, so it kind of puts me on a shaky, <laughs> shaky voice. After we ordered and before we got our food, they came and gave us this cloudy water. It's kind of cloudy. Is that, is that normal? Did, did you wash this? 
Um, it turns out that what they've done, this is called soba yu, and they have taken the soba water that the soba was cooked in, and they've added it to, guess, regular water, and it actually gives it kind of a thickness, a girth to the, the water. Do you want that? Is that something that you want? Um, at first we thought that it was like mochi, like maybe somebody had stuck a little bit of mochi and heated up the water and then just like ground the mochi into it so that you got that thickness. Um, it's not that. It is soba stuffs and Eric had a sip of this so he's gonna die. Just as an explanation, like think about if you cooked pasta and then you took the water from the pasta that you normally would like pour away and you made a drink out of it. That's what they've done. And I know, I'm not trying to say it's bad because it's not bad, it actually tastes pretty good. It's um, very hearty tasting, but it's just something that like, <laughs> it's not really like something that I think occurs to people outside of Japan that you can do that. I don't know if it would work quite as well with like a starchy pasta as it does with soba, but <laughs> do you want to try making some, do you want to try this when we get home? No, drink, I'm gonna drink let Fukui. Drink the pasta water. Fukui knows what to do with soba. <laughs> I don't know what to do with dirty water, so. <laughs> Send this recipe to some Italians and see what comes up. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come up with something good. Probably. Since I hadn't eaten very much for lunch, we stopped at a, not a convenience store, well, it's kind of a convenience store. It's more of like a pharmacy that has a place where you can get food. It's What's it called? Genki. And it's uh, it's spelled with a Y, which is a little strange in Japan. And it's not a pharmacy that I have ever seen before outside of this area. So maybe it's a regional thing. But they have just, it's a chain. They've got chain stuff. And there's nothing in there like super special. Um, but to fill up, I got this uh, this pizza cheese aji sandal. And it is, uh, we've done videos on the, uh, these types of things in the past. But never seen one that specifically had pizza cheese inside. Good lord. So what it is, is it is a piece of bread, two pieces of bread, that they have fused together into a pocket. And they've cut all of the uh, crust off the bread. People will know these as crustables in America. Are they called crustables? This exists in America? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on. All right, so yeah, this exists. I thought it more interesting because I didn't think it was outside of Japan. Or are they uncrustables? I don't know. <laughs> I can smell it, and it smells like uh, very oniony. Yeah, um, and they just put a little bit of sauce in there. I don't see any cheese at all. It Use tastes... your imagination. <laughs> it tastes okay. Um, it was a dollar. Fair enough. And then I'm splurging a little bit. What we've got here is we've got melonpan no kawa, which is skin. So this is a melon pond. It's not has nothing to do with melon. It looks like melon. And it is a um, piece of bread that they put a cookie on top of. And this is the skin of the melon pond. So that makes it the cookie. So I don't know why they didn't just call it a cookie. <laughs> because this is really all it probably is. Uh, yep. It's just a cookie. It's the good part of the melon pond. The rest of it is, I mean, it's fine. But this is the part that you're in it for. Is it the good part of the cookie? <laughs> <laughs> It smells exactly like every chocolate chip cookie I've ever smelled in my life. It's a little bit airier or something inside than you would get from your standard cookie. It's not quite as dense, but I mean, it tastes like a, it's, just, it's a cookie. I'm, I'm, I'm now showing you a cookie. <laughs> this is what we've gotten to. <laughs> well, Fukui is apparently very well known for dinosaurs. <laughs> um, they have found dinosaurs here. There are actually dinosaurs that are named after Fukui, which is very surprising. We read this on the way to this amazing prefectural dinosaur museum. Apparently this is one of the biggest dinosaur museums in the world, and I'm excited to actually see representations of the Fukui dinosaurs because they're actually named with Fukui in their name. So I have a feeling we'll find them around here somewhere. If we don't, they might find us. I think it's going to be hard to capture how cool it is to stand underneath the Brachiosaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs. We found the Fukuisaurus. Seriously, that's the name, Fukuisaurus. And this is a moderately sized dinosaur. 
I wouldn't say it's huge considering the other ones that we've seen, but Fukui is also home to another type of dinosaur, the Fukui Raptor. What a cool place to be in. It makes sense now why the Dinosaur Museum is here, but wow, I couldn't, I can't believe these were here at some point in time. Glad they're not now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So that was a really, really, really good museum, and I would 100% recommend going there and checking it out if you're in the area. We don't usually make a lot of video inside of museums just because I don't think it makes good watching. It's, it's a sterile environment, and it should be because it's like looking at a notebook. Like. But that, yeah, but that said, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like you don't want somebody to like read you a textbook. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's how I feel like when I go into video, in, into museums and we were thinking about making videos. And if something comes up, then of course we'll talk about it or whatever. But the general vibe of the place is amazing. All the mm -hmm. lighting is incredible. The sounds, it's, these sounds. <laughs> the sounds at one point, I was like, there's so much groaning going <laughs> on right now. Like, I don't feel like I am go under attack. I feel feel as though like a couple of animals have a tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all recently enough made and kept up that it doesn't feel like old. Like sometimes you go into museums like this and like the animatronics and stuff, you're like, come on, that looks like it was built in the 60s or whatever and that it hasn't been cleaned. That Tyrannosaurus when we walked in was really good. Yeah, there was a lot of these moving ones and stuff. And I mean, they didn't look real, but they looked convincing. They looked cool. And they had quite a few large skeletons, quite a few of them. And you could get the idea of how big things were. The one thing that caught my eye the most was we saw this turtle that was mm. just four meters across, the sea turtle. I had no idea that existed, that struck me. But just I, generally, it was a really cool place and I was very impressed with it. And it was only like 720 yen to get in or something. It was like six and a half bucks, which I think is a steal yeah, for what yeah. you get. And had you come with more time and more ambition, you could get way your yeah, money out yeah, of that. Yeah. Like, if you're a dino dude, this is the place for you. It was mm -hmm. very, very cool. The, something that was unique about it too for us is that like it's empty right now. It's yes. Monday afternoon, but it's also like during pandemic times. So there's hardly anybody there. And if you get the impression that they're prepared for huge crowds. Yes. Like I saw the, like The staffing line, that they have today doesn't seem like like it's changed from a regular day and it seemed like there was way too much staff going on so I can imagine the crowds that that number of staff is supposed to accommodate. So I think we got kind of lucky going in there during this time period. Yep. However, there was a whole bunch of interactive stuff that was just closed off. You couldn't touch it and stuff because they're trying to keep things clean. Mm. Some of it looked pretty cool. They had like a digital microscope that you could put down onto a fossil and then it would show on the screen like what you were looking at. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a stick on a, on a, with a wire on it and it can see like really tiny things. We put one in my beard at one point. Oh yeah, yeah, that? that was fun. Yeah, they had those and like some fossils and stuff you could put them on. Oh, something else that struck my mind is they had some people in there literally cleaning fossils now. Mm -hmm. And they're just like that was cool. on display, like the, the scientists are I on display. I kind of felt weird standing next to them watching them do their yeah. job because when people stand next to me and like you, they, I'm proofreading and they're just standing there, I'm just like, are they reading the same sentence? <laughs> Don't Are they do. judging me? Don't, don't read my <laughs> reading. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, top notch. Very cool exhibit. Mm -hmm. Very cool museum. I'm kind of surprised to find something that cool way out here in the countryside. But they, they found the Fukui Raptor like they did a couple kilometers. Yeah, away yeah, or it was like, like five that. kilometers from here. They found some dinosaurs, and there's an active site where they're still doing some digging sometimes. But obviously, we aren't scientists, so we aren't going to be a part of that. Yeah, that's true. Nobody has uh, recruited us for that Although, team. I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing lately and there are a lot of fossils there you dig are up. a lot of fossils so maybe i'm qualified mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very accurate representation of the balloonosaurus here the arms aren't flailing up like i'm i'm used to with these types of dinosaurs but uh still impressive nonetheless he'll probably evolve to just being a squiggle with arms <laughs> he's just sleeping man yeah <laughs> but i just went into the uh gift shop and i found this it's pretty cool it is really cool. <laughs> I was just kind of stunned and the bottles didn't have the dinosaur on it. So I, I went with the can because it had the dinosaur on it. <laughs> Too cool. Are these dinosaurs like a thing in Japan? Because I've met this same dinosaur in Tokyo, like down the street, one block away from where my office is in a Monte Sando. One of these guys is sitting outside pondering the thoughts of whatever you'd think of if you were holding a baby's skull. I don't know what I'd be thinking of, but 
this exists in Multisondo and it exists here. So that's just kind of strange. And then speaking of strange, what is up with all the buildings, all of the structural buildings in uh, in Fukui that are just really weird looking, like museum, you museum, museum, me, museum, museum, me, museum, me, museum, 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 like why a fire museum? I can't. <laughs> like, if you say, fi <laughs> I got nowhere to go with that. Museum, me, museum, me. There we go. I got it. Museum stuff yes it tends to have buildings that are really really strange like what is going on with this dome back here and am I walking on the museum now I think so when did museums be stuff that, like people could walk on <laughs> when did they start going you know what just put it in a mountain it's fine it seems to be working all right yeah I'm gonna give you the full understanding of how excited and happy I am in a way that this is not as crowded as it could be. Check out Germ Bag down there. He's just chilling in parking lot one. You may or may not be able to see parking lot two, which is way over there. Then there's parking lot three right here. Holy crap. I, I know that there are four stories in there and there's lots to look at, but that would be so snug if all of this was filled up. And, and you know that it would be. It just, it just, well, it's Monday. Maybe it wouldn't have been on a Monday, but on the weekend, this place would be bumping pre, pre-virus. So, I'm not happy about the virus. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, wow, that's an empty museum. I forgot to mention earlier that they are also doing the take your information when you go into the building for like some sort of contact tracing, I believe. Mm -hmm. Like we went in and they were like, do you have a reservation? And we we're like, we don't have a reservation. And she was like, you got to fill out this form. So and it seemed quite similar to the form we filled out yesterday. It a did. number of people, how you got here. But it did not ask me um, if I had a fever or I was showing any symptoms. But uh, then they took our temperature with the, the point at your head thing. Yep. So I think I think that's what it was because it's not super normal for them to ask you in Japan when you go into places for personal identification like type things. They're, they're, Japan's pretty privacy oriented mm. so that they're asking for addresses and that they're asking for like they wanted you, they said write down your, your phone number or your email like write it down. So I think that that's contact tracing stuff that has just started up now. Uh, so that, again, if they feel like that they have a bunch of people, somebody comes in and they ended up sick, then they can send everybody an email or whatever or call you and be like, yeah, get a test. So I think that's what's going on. I mean, I, I, that form specifically didn't say, but yeah, that's kind of what it felt like. Mm. And it was at like a, it was at like a desk that wasn't normal. It was a temp yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like a desk that they don't, it's not always there. So that I kind of adds, now I'm thinking it out. I think I'm right. I don't know if you can hear, <laughs> but these woods over here, there's like a dino park or something. And there's this dinosaur sounds coming out of the woods. It's kind of unsettling to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of dazing off and I, I thought to myself, wow, there's a guy sitting on that bench. He's having a really good time, you know, just up there. <laughs> It's that dinosaur. <laughs> this is my favorite ride. <laughs> Is some sort of dino thing though? Like, I don't understand. Is this a thing they used to do? It's an egg. <laughs> it's an egg. You sit on the dino egg and then you uh, propel yourself. <laughs> I think that, that might could fly. That might explain why they went extinct because they busted up their dino gonads on this ride <laughs> and then no more dinos. <laughs> Fukui is uh, pretty nice looking, it's really green. It is actually quite beautiful here. We've noticed that, especially today, we drove through the mountains and stuff and it was pretty gorgeous. And then everything, I think it's a type of season where everything is incredibly popping green because yes. it's like that time period for the rice paddies and everything. And the trees here are plentiful and green. It's just a very beautiful place. 
But there's also some white. There's <laughs> some white. White dosaurus. <laughs> that is seriously what they call him. In the book, I said white dosaurus. I was like, are they allowed to say that? Like, it <laughs> doesn't sound it's like accurate. it's kosher. You know what I'm saying? But this little guy looks like he needs a bath. It just, yeah, it does look kind of like they built a statue and we're like, okay, we're going to paint it. And then they're like, ah. Can't afford paint the it. paint. <laughs> just like, yeah, just leave it as is. It's really big though. It's like four meters or something. It's like two me's. Mm. I think it's more than two me's. I think it's real size. Is that how big white thesauruses were in real life? Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. <laughs> you really gotta lean into the corners. They haven't greased this puppy in a while. <laughs> you gotta fart again? <laughs> yeah, because usually you got two lined up. <laughs> Am I a double? No, it, you, it's like comedic effect. You know that if you hold the air in, you might get that second chance. And if you don't, you just let it out silently and it's fine. You're coming with the punchline. You, you hit her with the one and then you get a double punch. Wow! She doesn't know the back one's coming, so now I'm going to have to start But I know it. the second one's yeah, coming. Yeah, I know. Now I'm going to start breaking it into thirds now that I know yeah. you solve my comedic <laughs> mysteries. So, if, if in your 40s you're breaking it into thirds, in the 50s you're going to be breaking it into fours. If you if you get to the 80s, what are you going to be breaking it into... By then I'm going to be playing music. Tunes. I'm going to have tunes. <laughs> I'm impressed. You just you just gotta work on the farting and then it gets better and better and better. There's no way this is going into the This video. is a talent. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so when I used to go to school, uh, specifically when I was in high school, my commit not doing a good job. Wait, wait. A bug was on it. I'm kind of bummed that I can't go like try to learn how to do this. I think I'd be good at it. You don't have to video this. I just didn't want to hold the camera up. You just put your feet on places. You gotta have the good shoes though. Done. <laughs> Did I win? Did I get like a... <laughs> you ever see those videos of these, like those, those people like climbing them like huge, <laughs> super fast? Why wouldn't it be better if they weren't, wouldn't it be better if they were this tall? Major feature, the small arms. These long guys, I don't know. You're not fitting in. It's true. <laughs> Hey everybody, gonna throw a little bit of an advertisement-ish thing at you, but it's not VPN software, so don't worry, we're not selling you things you don't need. Um, we are looking to get a new camera and make a huge improvement in the way that our videos look and make a huge improvement in the motions that it takes for me to make videos and give me a lot more flexibility with making things look as natural as possible, which is my goal. And um, that means to get a new camera, and that means that the camera that I'm looking to get, while completely amazing, is expensive. It's very expensive. It's out of our budget by a significant amount. We are not rolling in it like you see some YouTubers. Like some people have got like, you know, tons of money and they're rolling with it. That's not us. Our project kind of just goes along and it maintains itself, but we don't have a massive budget to throw down for gear over and over all the time. So we're wondering if anybody would want to be a part of helping us get to that giant number. And if you are one of those people, or if you're interested in just seeing what camera we're looking at, I've made a web page that is linked down in the description and in the comments that will explain what camera it is, break down the costs of what it is, um, give a little bit of information as to why we are interested in that specific gear and how we expect it to improve our video. And um, on that page, there's also just a link to a PayPal button that you can contribute if you'd like. If, you, if everybody that watched the video threw us a few bucks, we'd get there pretty quickly. This would happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This thing would get to climb I'm up to the top. I'm gonna put a little tripod like there. <laughs> it's going to be very cute. Help me make it cute. Yeah. So, anyways, um, hopefully this isn't like too lame. 
but um, it's something that we really want to do, but uh, without anybody's support or without some support, but there's no way we can do it. It's just yeah, way too much we money. We have to go back down here right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we're at about 1200 at this point, and you know, we can work together and make it happen. Yeah, but if you're not interested in that at all, just keep enjoying the videos. That's yes, cool please. too. That, that is the main thing. Mm -hmm. We're glad to just share anything with you, and hopefully, we can make that stuff we share better. Oh! And we may also be doing some live streams soon where um, there, you can use the super chat button on YouTube to give donations to people when they do live streams. And when we do that, um, I'm thinking of doing a couple of them in the next couple of weeks, then we'll use that for the camera fund, anything that comes in there. So keep an eye out on our social medias, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. and on YouTube. Medias where we will be announcing times for live streams that should be coming up soon if you'd like to hang out with us and um i think that's the full list yeah thanks <laughs> another way to keep our video project going is to support us on patreon links below if you'd like to hang out for a live stream drop us a comment of where you're from and we'll pick the best times for streaming stay tuned more from japan on the way